hello, and welcome to another episode of Empower You Podcast, Season 6. If you guys are watching, this is the last one in the season, and um, yeah, I'm Michael, I'm your host. I'm here to shine a little light on living life a little bit more consciously. How I do that is I talk to amazing souls all around the world and see what they're doing, how they're using their light, their guidance, their intuition to make the world a better place. I just love having that conversation and elevating all of us. And today is no exception. I am so happy to be joined by Steph, Andy Cutler, and joining us from Mesa, Arizona today. Share with me about your story and like your passion in life and what you're doing to uh, help us all integrate into New Earth. Thank you so much for having me. All right, my story. I grew up in a very um, dysfunctional, very abusive home, emotionally, verbally, um, just really tumultuous. I actually ended up with a diagnosis of CPTSD. And really from there, growing up um, into a young adulthood, financial abuse, repetitive cycles of emotional, verbal abuse in my romantic relationships, transition to sexual abuse and assault. And um, when I started to awaken to the reality, hey, this isn't normal. This isn't healthy. I didn't, it was normalized for me. I literally was one for one. I'm just living my life surviving, but I didn't have the wherewithal, the awareness. And it was put to me, hey, one time that I was just, my friend was like, hey, that's verbal abuse. And I was like, what's that? And I started to wake up and, and start to like do research. And then I started to realize like, oh, I'm bringing some of this into my, like, I take me with me in every relationship. Let's not just take and project like responsibility solely onto my, the, the, those folks who were abusing me, but like, where am I showing up and how am I like repeating these, beha- these behavioral patterns? And so as I started to heal, I had this big epiphany of, there's not enough safe spaces for folks to truly unwrap and unwind their trauma and with that their social conditioning and so from that my passion was why i just want to connect with people i want to help people i want to hold space for people and um because no knowing that i've been through therapists and counseling i i I definitely worked with specialists during my i think the course six years of like my healing um but being able to neutralize triggers from CPTSD, these are things that you have to go through. These are episodes that you have to go through in order to get to the other side and tap back into your humanity, really, as how I would explain my triggers, that they were. Um, it was just like the first thing I needed was a safe space. So from that, um, uh, uh, my business was born in Cycle Annie, and it really is about trauma-informed safe space. I don't want anyone to be re-traumatized. I want to reduce harm in the world by having these conversations. Yeah, like, and that's such a deep subject because like we're like, there's different levels obviously, but to to me as an energetic being, yes, I've went through the physical things. I'm 50, I'll be 57 next month. And like, I've lived a lot of what you're speaking of and it was like normal. There was no other thing out there that told me that there was a difference, right? So I had no contrast. I thought it was normal Mm -hmm. and they're surviving. So I totally relate to what you're saying. But for me now living in the world is traumatizing every single day. And so like when I was reading your form and I'm like, that's what started going off into my head is like, oh, where am I? Like, how am I surviving this thing? What are, I work with a lot of triggers too, with, you know, we, we have to shift those from reacting to them to being able to respond or being are able to, we were talking earlier about responsibility and radical responsibility about our ability to respond requires an enormous amount of awareness about what's happening. And we don't have access to that until we get to the safe space, which I call the blank space, the blank space. You're like, you're the safe space. It's a space where you can go, you know, like after the fire and like the red cross come get you and put you in the, like you're safe now. So you can like, figure the next steps out because none of us saw any of this trauma coming, right? Like Mm -hmm. what's your experience with like the people that you're working with or your take, like where you're at now with what you're, what you're doing, um, relating it to, cause we're constantly being assaulted right now with all of this information. I'll just call it information. (laughs) 
Uh, yeah, I I really always take everything back to self. So it's always about, you know, um, what do I need first and foremost? Like, do I need to shut off the TV? Do I need to put my phone down and stop looking at social media? Like, is that wreaking havoc and taking my nervous system out of the parasympathetic, the rest and digest state? And then it's what do I need first and foremost? And then how can I show up? Like what capacity do I have to have these conversations to shift what I'm doing or where I, like the, the spaces that I'm taking up so that I can um, be in a thrive while also acknowledging that pain is inevitable. And I, or let me, let me rephrase it, Com discomfort is inevitable. And so what threshold is my discomfort level at that I can go and create change? And whether that's like, let me just go enjoy time with my friends, you know, let me go have a conversation with my coach. Let me go, you know, listen to some music and, you know, have my own one dance party of one, which I love to do. What do I need? And if I'm tapping into, I really have this belief, like if I'm tapping into showing it for myself, my highest is what I call it. Like if I'm showing it for mm -hmm. my highest good, then it is actually for the highest good of everyone else. So mm -hmm. if I have a capacity to go help someone, then let me go do that. If I feel like that is, I have the space and the gift that to someone. But if I don't have that, then I'm going to stay home and I'm just going to drink my tea and, you know, journal or, you know, play a game or whatever it is, have a phone call. And um, that is my enough. And so I would say that is actually making sure that I'm staying in that safe zone is stretching my discomfort zone, but staying in that safety. You're aware though, that discomfort is not a bad thing, right? Yes. No, and the, the, no, that's uh, absolutely. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, what's my discomfort threshold so I can go um, yeah, support and be yeah. uncomfortable. But like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like working out, you know, it's like, it's something that we have to train for because it's just like, I can sense you're an energetic being too. So mm -hmm. there's just a, everything's energy, but we're taught at such a young age that it's not, that it's all, you know, strive, struggle, and we got to survive this stuff. And our energetic beings like, no, we're supposed to be in harmony with it. And, but we lose our connection or our, our, ourselves. It's so easy to step outside of that whenever beer comes to town, but what's your solutions or how do you, how do you manage the uncomfortability? How do you, how do you create your life on, with this at play? You know, like we want to remove it, but actually it takes both sides of the coin to like, we live in a duality, a world of duality. So it, we don't know joy unless we know suffering. Like that's part of the, yeah. part of the deal. But like, yeah. I find myself from trauma mm -hmm. wanting to like, never have to experience that again. And I've like, I've realized that that's not really the reality that I'm living in, that there is both. And I have the power to recontextualize what happened, that it's not, I'm not imagining that that's happening to me right now, which is always happening in the trigger state. We're imagining something from our past that's not actually happening right now. And these different characters in our life show up to help us, I believe, complete that so that we mm. know ourselves as whole and complete. But like, I was just curious from your perspective, because I don't know how old you are, but I know you're younger and I know you've like, like, I love your experience. I love to know more about your experience. Mm -hmm of how you see the world right now, how, how, like, what's your vision? What's your vision that's pulling mm. you forward every day? Oh, I love this question because I throw people off with my answer because I really see um, a world that is collaborative and loving. And yeah, that is like, we're safe spaces for ourselves first and, and then that's inviting other folks. So um, that is my vision. And I really believe it's possible to like for the world to be healthy and safe for all peoples. Uh, and I think that the way that we get there is uh, by unwinding our own trauma, unwinding our own conditioning. And the only way that we can unwind our social conditioning is if we start to unwind and unpack our trauma programming because I feel like in my experience right like the trauma that I endured filled me up it, it was all consuming to where I couldn't see it was tunnel vision I couldn't see around me and I couldn't see that there were other experiences I couldn't comprehend because I was so just stuck in this like you know like I imagine like a, a game control where you're just like you press the a button too many times and now it's just stuck you're like, mm -hmm. you're just stuck there. You don't even know that the other buttons exist at that point. And um, if we start to unpack and unwind that, we take that, you know, radical self-responsibility because it's uncomfortable 
outrageously uncomfortable in my experience. It is uncomfortable, but, but that's <laughs> like, that's how I know mm -hmm. now. Like it's taking mm -hmm. time. It wasn't like a light switch, but if I sense uncomfortable, I get excited a little bit because I know something's happening. I know that yeah. there's something coming in. If I get like, if I notice a fear, I run to it because I know that there is really good shit on the other side of that. So it's like I've learned to program myself to understand those things that I used to avoid that kept me stuck if for, for just fear. Um, mm -hmm. Like what's on the other side of that? What's mm -hmm. the, like one of the biggest ha ha's I've ever had was like realizing that, you know, the avoidance of something is really the denial that you're already feeling it. And, you know, like the thing that we don't want to be comfortable, like we're little, we're literally living with it anyway at the exact same level, it's just avoiding or confronting. Avoiding, mm -hmm. are, you, are you walking the dog or is the dog walking you? So it's mm -hmm. these choices. So I'm so curious, was this just an awareness? Because I'm a channel and my guides tell me that you guys are born with a lot of intrinsic knowledge that you don't have to go get in a book. You, you like connect with it inside your own systems and you just know it. Is that happened for you? Or is there, was there a book or was there a thing or was there something that like sparked, you know, you just don't wake up day and start healing yourself and talking the way that you talk from trauma. Mm -hmm. So I know that there was a point A and where you're at right now. So what was the things inside of that? Your own tuition or was it some sort of uh, thing that came to you? All of the above. Okay. I definitely, um, even though I didn't understand or know my intuition when I was a child, I definitely had insights, uh, but I didn't really know what to do with them. Um, and then as I started to, he, like what brought me to the healing was um, the universe provided the only safe space that I had in my life. It was my best friend, still my best friend today. Uh, they texted me. I was in a space where I was literally homeless. I had just transitioned to homelessness. I was, you know, um, leaving a volatile home situation. And my best friend was like, Hey, I just got an apartment, you know, a two bedroom. If you want to move at, move in with me, ha ha. And I, a week later texted them and it's like, uh, are you, sh are you serious? And from there, like they were absolutely serious. Thank goodness. And I moved in and what transpired was I started to experience a whole different type of living, which was safety. I was able, I was experienced privacy. I sat with myself and I grieved, like I just intuitively knew that my body needed me to experience my emotions. I hadn't yet read the, uh, the body keeps score. And so I didn't understand that my body was holding on to these traumas, these emotions mm -hmm. that I hadn't processed, but my intuitively, I knew I needed release. So I would go through days of just hiding in my room, crying, and then distracting myself because sometimes it would be too much that I'd be like, let me watch some TV because that's my coping mechanism from childhood. And then I'd go back to crying and feeling this pain, not really understanding where it's coming from, but knowing it was from my childhood. And so from there, I was you know, guided to the right people that really helped me evolve my learning. But definitely, I would say a mix of all of those. Awesome. I'm just always yeah. curious. For me, it was like a book that fell off a shelf that hit me in the head when I was like, uh, like 18. Mm -hmm. I was like, the thing because intuitively going to school I, I figured out how to sur survive it because i grew up gay in a small town so i was like extra right mm -hmm. and so it was like head down let's just go and but that experience really was the thing that became my uh magical power was you know i did know how to survive and like, do you ever find that too? Like at the beginning, maybe not so much now, but like realizing that that was like all of the stuff that happened to us gave us everything we needed to have the foundations to our lives to kind of expand. And it's cyclical, you know, I'm still getting lessons from things that happened 20, 30 years ago that I just see in a different way. And like, oh my God, I wouldn't be here right now if, if that really crappy thing hadn't happened, right? So yeah. there's this whole thing, but at the same time, there's this web of like getting from A to B intact and where we know ourselves as like, still know ourselves as whole and complete, even though we went through these experiences and on some deep level, we, I believe we chose them so that we could be the light that needs to be shown right now in the world because yeah. 
not everybody's going to have that connect that you have and the light that's in your eyes because I can see it and I can sense it. That draws to it its its own audience. Have you started to figure that out yet? Or like, what's your take on that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I if I want to, if I can go back for a moment, you you were saying uh, that you know knowing that we're still intact that really resonated um, and that we're still whole because I didn't know that I was whole when I was a child. I didn't know that I was whole until I was like 30 and, you know, maybe 28, 29, but really like I didn't and uh, being at able to unwind I that. I didn't know at 47. Mm -hmm. and, and, and being able to like unwind and say, I am not the sum of my experiences. I can't, like I have used the sum of my experiences in a way and, 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 and repurpose them from pain into supporting and serving others because I'm passionate about that. And I see that. And that's, that's part of my life. And that is part of who I am and who I be. But like, I didn't know that I was always whole because I was taught that I was broken. I was taught that I was the problem child. And I loathe that phrase. You know, um, back in the nineties, that was like the therapist that I saw, you're the problem child. I'm like, looking back, I had CPTSD. I, I was traumatized. I'm sorry. Who didn't pick this up? Adults, <laughs> you know? Well, they were living in their own universe mm -hmm. and, you know, regurgitating what they had been taught from the past. Like that's how our mm -hmm. system used to work. That's how mm -hmm. you go to college and you learn what other people had figured out, but don't ever have an original thought. Like, no, 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 that's bad. <laughs> yeah. Just like yeah. what, but. If you really think about that, there's no growth there. There is no uncomfortability mm -hmm. there. Like our whole operas, your whole way we operate as human beings is to avoid all that stuff. So we live that 1950 version of whatever people thought it was back then with yeah. June Cleaver and everything. And still like today, they're holding on to that. There's a segment of the population that seriously does not want to let that shit go. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, there's too much that's happened to the underbelly of humanity that we've all experienced because of this crap that's the way it's been. That's like, no, not today. Not yeah. And that, I call that, uh, that's one of the things that I really implement in my approach is critical thinking. I'm not here to give you the answer. I'm here to hold space and I can reflect things back to you, but it's really up to you to discern um, so that you can develop that critical thinking. So I think like, even in myself, I did not learn critical thinking until I was older. And I actually learned it from my twin sister. I didn't learn it from my parents. I, my, my twin um, came out the you know, she, 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 she came into this world just being like an advocate and like having a comprehension that I didn't have because we took on two different personas. And so I got to learn from her just through her asking me questions and developing my critical thinking skills to learn. That. And so that's something I absolutely like gift to like whoever I work with. And, um, you know, going back to your other question about like my light and drawing folks and, and like, you know, really do I acknowledge that I do. And also over the last few years, it's been, um, learning to um, unwind this narrative of being afraid to be seen excelling. Cause okay. that was something that I actually, it was a, a trauma that I experienced when I was like in fourth grade. And uh, I, 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 I know this moment <laughs> that I decided, you know, I'm just going to set everything down. I'm going to hide my light. I'm going to hide who I am. When you're fourth and grade, right? Fourth grade. Yeah. Sh do you care to share a little bit? I, yeah, sure. From a broad I was point of view. Yeah, uh, as a child who excelled academically, um, I loved it. I loved schoolwork. I asked for extra schoolwork. I read books. Don't ask. <laughs> the whole thing. I love being nerdy. But at, back then, like that, just I didn't. It was just innate in me. Hey, give me all the work. Let me do the things. Let me learn. I just want to learn. And um, because of that, I started to get bullied. Um, because the, the person I thought was my friend was really, I didn't understand clicks until this school. And this, this person, I, I guess, felt insecure about my love of academia, um, because they were at a, a lower level of learning and I didn't know that. And they started to bully me. And that was the, the beginning of my bullying until, you know, until my parents moved me to <laughs> schools. Um, and it really negatively impacted me. I was so self-conscious. I felt I was so isolated. I remember telling my mom at one time, hey, I don't have any friends, you know, and uh, just really affected how I thought of myself. And so I was afraid to enjoy schoolwork. I was in, afraid to do well at my essays. People used to tear down my projects. Um, 
because they were well done. I also had help from my mom, uh, but uh, like, I was so proud of the presentations I would give. And, um, I just was, you know, really just awful experience of being bullied and, and, and transpired. And so not realizing that, that going back to that moment that I had been, you know, hiding myself in a shadow, except for around people that I felt innately safe with, which I didn't know because my friend was like, did you know that? Um, you hide your light, but then when you're like, when you're around uh, like these people, but then when you're like by yourself, you like, you just shine and you're just effervescent. And I was like, no. And I didn't know what to do with that. I think I was about 17 or 18 at that time. And I didn't know what to do with that. And, um, mm. yeah, it was, it's, it's been able to say, Hey, this is affecting me like over here in my adult life. Um, but it's actually stems from all the way over here in, you know, my childhood, you know, you carry that with you subconsciously, you know, and. At times you, and I, I've had the experience and I, I'd be curious to know if you, but um, I've had the experience where some things I've been able to heal by naming them, right? Like by this moment, I, I had this memory, I was able to like neutralize and unwind it and heal it. But then there's other things that I've healed that I have no idea what their origin was and I don't even need to name them. And like, I could just, I feel different. Like I felt the shift. Yeah. Well, there's, they show me that it is, uh, there are roots, there are certain roots that if you get that certain root, then the root pulls out not only that thing, but everything that was wired connected to that thing. Mm -hmm. So like bullying is a very, very type of an energy. So you had a light and that attracted the polar opposite of it. That was like, you know, like even the back then when you didn't know it, you attracted the bully. I attracted the bullies. The bullies actually are what caused me to become who I am today. And that was because like in our school, if you didn't play sports, you were bully. You know, if they detected you were gay or sissy or anything like that, they would like definitely go after you or what you wore, just bullshit, crazy stuff. But mine was seventh grade going from middle school to high school or actually eighth grade from middle school to high school. I was like, I literally cannot survive going here. Like I can't imagine, I couldn't see past going through these four years, continuing to do that. And I, I was very specific moment. Like you had, that was like, oh no, I'll do this. So I became uh, you know, student council. I guys, I did that. And it was like, that's when my leader skills kicked in. And that was my strong suits, how I won everything. I was like leading and creating, but I never had my moment where I got to go back and like, face the bullies energetically, right? So at, and at some point in various different situations and a lot of different areas, I face that energy of being bullied because they'll translate with a partner that you're not exactly upfront with, or you sell yourself out not to make a ruckus, not, you know, keep things smoothed over. Like there, you sell your soul so quickly when you're have not completely faced the fear of being bullied because it's a fear of criticism is what it really is at the underneath of it. So people could criticize all they want to now. Like, I don't give a shit. I'm connected to who I am and I'm listening to something bigger and it has nothing to do with you. But that took a long time to get through facing, standing yeah. up to every conceivable fear that I could imagine having. Have you had those experiences yet? Cause like you have to have your, beat the bully moment before you're ever going to be free of it. So like, has that happened or has that process started to happen to you yet? Oh, it's, it's happened. And, um, I think my greatest experience, uh, my great, my greatest choice this year was standing up and standing in my truth and standing in like this universal truth of experience and being able to say, look, I can argue with you, but I stand by what I said. I said, what I said, and I stand by it. Um, and um like being able to remove like walk away from you know this person that was absolutely bully and um it was a combination this person embodied a combination of uh personas that i had uh, you know experienced being bullied from as an energy yes, that i was like do. what <laughs> that is a that is so true like mm -hmm. rarely ever you talk about that the personas remember that cartoon with the american guy with the roger the character american dad oh. was that he yeah. would have the personas like, mm -hmm. I loved that character, but in reality, that's exactly what you had to do when you haven't faced it yet. It's like you create mm -hmm. a way to fit in that is just completely inauthentic. But in my mind, I thought, oh, I'm fooling. Every I'm, 
I am surviving this. It was another survival mechanism. Mm -hmm. Until yeah, I had compartmentalized I had around this it, person. I used to have fun with it, but at the same mm -hmm. time, until you can get to your authentic self, like you don't really have any real power. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why I'm committed to people understanding mm -hmm. that we have the mm -hmm. ultimate power to create the reality that mm -hmm. we want to create for ourselves mm -hmm. and collectively. Mm -hmm. And like, I love what you believe that's possible for the world. I believe the world can actually work for everybody. I believe that we can mm -hmm. live in a world that literally yes. works for everybody and that everyone mm -hmm. has the gift to give. And it's a small little piece of the puzzle to create mm -hmm. the new earth that we're going to live in. That's not based off of surviving something. It's based off of thriving in something. And what will that experience be like? And what will that transition be like? And how can I use my voice and my gift of seeing to help others on that journey with me? You know, that we're, mm -hmm. we all have it innately in us, or we wouldn't mm -hmm. be here at this time right now. We wouldn't have mm -hmm. come in when we came into the planet and we wouldn't have created the scenarios and the bullies and the, mm -hmm. all the events that lead us up to these moments where we actually mm -hmm. have a, a safe space to talk yes. about the real things that's happening energetically mm -hmm. to us as human beings versus mm -hmm. all the story parts about the survival aspects of life mm -hmm. that are no longer being supported by mother earth. Like she just isn't, it's not, it's transformation time. <laughs> yeah, I think it's that not... I, I I feel that a lot of people are ready for this awakening and they just at the very beginning or they're on the cusp of it and they're just not sure what that looks like. I think and it can be scary because uh, when you challenge when we challenge someone's identity, right, like these people when they're doubling, they down. Mm -hmm. um, I read the dance. Of, I read parts of the dance of anger when it revealed itself to me. And it was so eye, eye opening because I was like these folks, like even myself, right, like when, when I was going through it, like. It was like you double down on what you believe your identity is because you're afraid of that space because you were taught something. We were conditioned to believe something about ourselves. And if we don't fit that narrative anymore, then we're so uncomfortable. We're like, well, what does that mean? Well, it means we're facing potential rejection from your community or your the society at large because – Right. You're no longer subscribing to that narrative. But once you break, once you're willing to get into that discomfort, move through that fear, you're able to actually uh, release yourselves from the chains of these narratives that are not true for you. If you open yourself up um, and, and it's such a pivotal point, I feel, to get to this, you know, like new earth, you know, that they are describing. I had full body chills when you were describing. It. I was like, oh, my God, yes, I love this. Um, mm -hmm. I, I support this. And I think it really is that it's um, it's helping folks feel safe and understand, like, I'm going to shine my light. And that means that you are safe to shine your light around me. So if that means that you're safe to shine your light around me, now go experience shining it everywhere else that you feel called and yeah. with that it's going to multiply and the more safe spaces we have um, which is why it was so key for me to like use the I, safety is pivotal i feel in this experience in this because it opens you up i like that you use uh, you said blank space i like that because it, it allows for the reality of for, for, so that you can actually exist as who you be in whatever moment so then you can be responsive. You can choose. You can tap and say, who do I choose to respond like as? How, who do I choose mm -hmm. to be? You know? Yeah. And I think that's pivotal. For me, it's design. It's about the power to design our experience. Mm -hmm. I, I had a design. I, but like one of the fundamental principles of design is you have to start with a blank space. You have to start with a blank slate. Otherwise, yeah. you're not designing. You're rearranging. And like that was a huge huge aha and i still use that all the time i use it in my morning practice when i wake up you know i'm like super clear like that's one of the most powerful times in our lives in our daily life is right before we go to bed and when we wake up it's the most powerful time that we can uh shift and uh, be present because that's where we put our energy of our third eye and visioning what we want in our lives even so much as to like go through the day at the end of the day and like create it as if it happened the way that you wanted it to happen because your mind doesn't give it rat's ass. It always remembers the last thing that it was said. Same way with anybody in your audience. It always remembers the last thing you say. So it's like, why not use that power to, it's all made up, it's all invented, all of it. So why not make up some really great stuff? And so just, being you in the world mm -hmm. is doing that with your particular niche of folks that you're 
attracting and will be attracting. Have you written up, are you started writing a book yet? I have started. I have started. Yes, yes. They just told me that you're writing a book. Do you got mm -hmm. the title yet? No, I've played with okay. a few, so I don't have the official yet. <laughs> okay. So I always check to make sure before I blurt something out. So they're saying to, for you to open up, is this okay to share this with you? Please. Please. So yes. do you have a, uh, do you have a centering practice that you do every day? I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in that, just create an intention that you hear the name they want. You have guides too, mm -hmm. by the way. So they're wanting mm -hmm. to talk directly to you. Mm -hmm. So find your little blank space in there and allow that to happen and create it intend it in such a way that you'll, when you hear it, it's beyond doubt because that way they tried to communicate with you before, but you doubt it and that pushes it away. So you don't really connect. So just add in there. I'm going to hear this today in a way that's beyond doubt. And however you hear that will be that way for you because it's in the name, the power of the name that mm -hmm. outside comes the book. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So let me know what that is. We'll talk about it. I will. <laughs> but I will. It's actually really big thing and it's supposed to be mm -hmm. happening within the next year. So wherever mm -hmm. you're at with it, it's not something that put this off. It's like mm -hmm. now there's mm -hmm. also a lady that's on our podcast, Lucy Pope, listen to her podcast. And she just wrote one. You guys have the exact same sort of vibe, even click to reach out to her about how okay. she did what she did, but it's needed in the world. I'm hearing it very directly. So this is your time to uh, shine even brighter by using mm -hmm. your your tissue to get this out of you and onto paper mm -hmm. okay because okay. so many other things will come from it just to, yeah. it was really really strong so i thought i would share that with thank you thank you no thank you i really do appreciate that my pleasure what's next for you besides <laughs> this book that you're working on mm -hmm. what, like, besides... what's the thing that's like pulling you forward like even though we're mm -hmm. in chaos and all this stuff's happening mm -hmm. I find that there's that the mm -hmm. this clarity that we can have about the things like that pull us forward. Like I like when I I wake up and I'm excited about the day, even though I don't know the particulars of how it's all going to unfold. I'm clear. I'm in that space for that to occur. Like I'm in alignment. Mm -hmm. What are you in alignment with right now? Play. That is, I literally am a season where I've done so much healing and I've done so much building and I've done so much, you know, unlearning that my system's like, we need to go out and we need to learn how to play. I, I didn't get to do that as much as a child and I didn't really, you know, take advantage of that when I was a young adult. And so I am learning how to play. That is what excites me in the morning. <laughs> That's your book. That's your book. That's mm -hmm. the context for your book. Okay. Okay titles in some arena of how we used to play because there's a thing that says we can't play when we get older it's serious mm -hmm. it's adulty and you tapped mm -hmm. into that and you see that it's kind of bullshit right mm -hmm. so now you get to create that so imagine how many others are in the world had similar experiences that completely mm -hmm. left fun and play out of their life and what an impact that would have if they were able to somehow via your book, get those insights to get back into where play became a part of the big vision of life. Like it is part of it. So like another example from my generation is my generation all like, you know, work, 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 work till like one day mm -hmm. you get to a point where you're just old enough to barely enjoy life, but yeah, then you can go have fun. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't really work that way. You know? So it's yeah. like, yeah. Very powerful. Anything yeah. else you would like to like add or like, as we wrap up for this particular podcast, which has been like amazing to hear your story and how yeah. you're integrating into your world. But Thank how you. are you like, what's the takeaway for you today? Keep shining my light. That's the takeaway because I did just relocate and I'm regrounding um, in this new space. And um, that's my takeaways. Keep shining my light and just um, embodying really my core values so that others can, you know, know that they're safe to do that also. So I thank you for it. that reminder and that reflection. You're so welcome. Thank you so much for showing up. I know we had a couple of yes. like, we we're supposed to have it a time and that this happened and that happened and this happened and that happened, but we didn't mm -hmm. give up. And nope. I believe, I know now this happened in the right headspace for both of us to yes. have this exact conversation that would not have happened any other time. 
and you're my last episode for this particular season. That's been like totally yeah. amazing talking to amazing people. So mm -hmm. thank you for ending it up. We started with talking with uh, Dana Saperstein, uh, who was a trauma specialist and how he dedicated his life to it. So it's like the perfect dovetail, different generations, but perfect mm -hmm. dovetail of this amazing uh, series that I had this time. So thank you for being such a part thank of you. it. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you got amazing value out of today mm -hmm. and this whole series. Let us know like what you got, what's changed in your world, what's mm -hmm. going on with you. We're here to listen. We're here to help and we're here to evolve. So mm -hmm. with that, much love. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, yeah, we will see you guys next season. Bye guys.